I'm Andrew with Clothed with Power Ministries, and here at Clothed with Power, we believe in everything that Scripture teaches, and we try to live by it to the best of our ability. For that reason, I'm going to read Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasure, passing our days in malice and envy, and ha hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His mercy, uh, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And this is my testimony. I come from a very loving family. I was raised by my mother, and I have a sister who was older. Growing up, I never wanted for anything. I had all my needs provided for. My parents divorced when I was about eight years old. My father was never really there mentally. He was very controlling, and when we, when we would go over to his house, he always had some new over-the-top rule. I just wanted a dad. I had a strong urge just to have a dad, who would always say things and do things that were just mean. When I was 13, I asked if I could come live with him, but he said he was too busy for that to happen. Now my mother, on the other hand, was full of love, and she showed it in her words, especially in her actions. I would get notes daily telling me that she loved me, and, that, and all that she does, she tries her hardest, but something I struggled with was feeling love. I knew with my brain that I was loved, but I never felt loved. I would end up seeking validation and love in all the wrong places, sports, especially football, which I ended up getting hurt uh, playing and I couldn't play in college. Validation in women and other people. I would objectify women, especially, and play on their emotions to get what I wanted. Finally, drugs and alcohol, those stuck around the longest. This route would lead me to descend to levels of darkness I never knew existed. I would say and do things I never would sober. And due to my poor decision-making process, I would bounce from job to job. I was unarguably unemployable. Eventually, I would burn every bridge of anyone who cared and wanted to get close to me. It took me 16 years to live this destructive life, and I assure you this only scratches the surface. I professed faith in Christ young at about 12 years old, but without proper discipling and a network of believers, I ended up going down the wrong path. As a result of my path, I have an extensive criminal history. Every time I would get into trouble, I would always seek God to get me out of trouble. I never wanted to continue with Him as Lord and Savior. I just wanted Him for insurance, you know, just in case. Eventually, I was charged with rape. I, com I completely humiliated a woman I had dealings with and treated her the way no woman should ever be treated. It is without excuse. Life as I knew it was about to be over. I was looking at 60 plus years in prison, a virtual life sentence seeing that I am now 34 years old. It was in this setting, jail, that I came to acknowledge that I was truly lost, I was without God, and that if I had died, I would be eternally separated from God. I knew I needed God to save my soul, not just get me out of trouble, like I had done in times past. And for three months, I wrestled with God. I was angry confused and devastated at the course that my life had taken. I was ashamed of the destruction that I had left in my wake. It's hard to explain. You just have to go through the process to understand. But God won and I submitted. I can look back to June 2016 and this is where the change that God has enacted in me started. I'm no longer a slave to my past. Christ has truly redeemed me and set me free. But my, not, but my new life in Christ had only just begun, and for three years, while in jail, I walked out my faith. It was the hardest time of my life. I was getting treated like an animal by guards and inmates alike. I was being told that I just had jailhouse religion. I was being laughed at, ridiculed, and mocked but I still stood for Christ. Reading and studying the Bible for 16 hours a day, holding Bible studies, having prayer circles, 
and praying for the guys and watching men come to faith in Christ and getting blessings from God and getting to go home and having their families restored. I was keeping the faith, like Joshua and Caleb, who brought back a favorable report from the promised land only to have the masses reject it. And they had to watch a whole generation die over 40 years in the wilderness. But like them, I kept the faith. It was real hard and I made missteps along the way. I still mess up, but God provided me with the grace to have faith and the strength to endure this trying time. In 2019, God blessed me with the opportunity to have a life outside of prison. I have to register as a sex offender, but God accepts me when people don't. And my identity is in Christ, not my circumstances. I found the Miracle Hill Overcomer program and I entered into this Christ Center Discipleship Center and it taught me the tools I needed to live out my faith and provided me with a safe space to apply the things that scripture teaches for a healthy life. I am not that miserable wretched boy that I once was and I'm learning to be the man that I profess to be in Christ. God has given me the ability to have dreams again and I have plans moving forward now in my new life in Christ. Ultimately, nothing is important without Christ. Everything else will fall in line as long as I keep him first. My name is Andrew Connor, and I am a child of God. Healing.